Hi y'all. Welcome to your AP Statistics Chapter 22, Video 1. Today we're going to be comparing two proportions. Comparisons between two percentages are much more common than questions about isolated percentages. We often want to know how two groups differ, whether a treatment is better than a placebo control or whether this year's results are better than last year's. In order to examine the difference between two proportions, we need another ruler, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution model for the difference between two proportions. Recall that the standard deviations don't add, but variances do. In fact, the variance of the sum of or difference of two independent random quantities is the sum of their individual variances. The standard deviations of the difference between two proportions, okay, Proportions are observed and independent random samples are independent. Thus, we can add their variances, so our rules that we learned before apply. The standard deviation of the difference between two sample proportions is, and we denote that as SD and then P hat 1 minus P hat 2 equals P1 Q1 over N1 plus P2 Q2 over N2. Thus, the standard error is SE P hat 1 minus P hat 2 equals the square root of P hat 1 times Q hat 1 over N1 plus P hat 2 times Q hat 2 over N2. Assumptions and conditions. All right, to be able to make the independence assumptions we need to be able to make, um, first thing we check is the randomization condition. The data in each group should be drawn independently and at random from a homogeneous population or generated by a randomized comparative experiment. There needs to be randomization. The 10% condition. If the data are sampled without replacement, the sample should not exceed 10% of the population. Independent groups assumption. The two groups were comparing must be independent of each other. This is the first time we've seen this. This is the first time we've dealt with two groups. So the groups themselves need to be independent of each other. Sample size condition. Each of the groups must be big enough so um, we must expect at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. If we're doing a if we're doing a hypothesis test, if we're doing an um, an interval, then uh, what we want is to observe at least ten successes and at least ten failures. We already know that for large enough samples, each of our proportions has an approximately normal sampling distribution. The same is true for their difference. Provided that the sampled values are independent, the samples are independent and the sample sizes are large enough, the sampling distribution of p hat 1 minus p hat 2 is modeled by a normal model with mean mu equaling p1 minus p2, and the standard deviation is, is exactly as we described it before. When the conditions are met, we are ready to find the confidence interval for the difference of two proportions. And so the confidence interval is the difference between our two sample proportions plus or minus z star times the standard error of the difference of our two sample proportions. The critical value z star depends on the particular confidence level c that you specify, just like it did previously. Everyone into the pool. The typical hypothesis test for the difference in the two proportions is the one of no difference. And in symbols, we have H naught and then colon P1 minus P2 equals zero or P1 equals P2. You can write it either way. Since we are hypothesizing that there is no difference between the two proportions, that means that the standard deviations for each proportion are the same because they all come from the same distribution. Since this is the case, we combine or pool the counts to get one overall proportion. The pooled proportion is p hat pooled equals success 1 plus success 2 over n1 plus n2. We call that x1 and x2. In our calculator, whenever it prompts us for information, it's going to ask us for x1 and x2. 
where success 1 equals n1 times p hat 1, and success 2 equals n2 times p hat 2. Usually you're just told the number of successes in each group. If the numbers are success of successes are not whole numbers, round them first. This is the only time you should round values in the middle of a calculation, but we have to have whole numbers there. We then put this pulled value into the formula, substituting it for both sample proportions and the standard error formula. So the standard error pooled of P1 hat minus P2 hat is equal to P hat pooled times Q hat pooled over N1 plus P hat pooled times Q hat pooled over N2. Compared to what? We'll reject our null hypothesis if we see a large enough difference in the two proportions. How can we decide whether the difference we see is large? Just compare it with its standard deviations. Unlike previous hypothesis testing situations, the null hypothesis doesn't provide a standard deviation, so we'll use a standard error. Here, the pooled one. The two conditions for the two proportion or the conditions for the two proportion z test are the same as for the two proportion z interval. Um, we are testing the hypotheses H not P1 minus P2 equals zero, or equivalently, H not P1 equals P2. Because we hypothesize that the proportions are equal, we pool them to find the P hat pooled. We use the pooled value to estimate the standard error. And now we find the test statistic. Z equals P hat 1 minus P hat 2 minus 0, because that's the hypothesized value for P1 minus P2 over the standard error of the pooled P hat 1 minus P hat 2. When the conditions are met and the null hypothesis is true, this statistic follows the standard normal model. So we can use that model to obtain a p-value. So what can go wrong? Don't use two sample proportion methods when the samples aren't independent. These methods give wrong answers when the independence assumption is violated. Don't apply inference methods when there was no randomization. Our data must come from representative random samples or from a properly randomized experiment. Don't interpret a significant difference in proportions um, casual, casually. Be careful not to jump to conclusions about causality. Okay, don't interpret. <laughs> All right. We will come back in just a minute with our example.